think you got it. All right, I am Billy Arismith here with uh, Wakia, and this is... I'm Sean Schimmel. I'm uh, <clears throat> best known as the voice of Goku on Dragon Ball Z. I'm Christopher Sabat. I'm the voice of Vegeta and Piccolo on Dragon Ball Z. All right, so uh, I went to the panel earlier. You guys were talking about <laughs> Resurrection F. One of the things that you brought up that I thought was really interesting was uh, the ways that your interpretations of the characters were different than what you thought was written in the uh, original by Toriyama. You were talking about like uh, how Toriyama said that Goku was sort of a sympathetic character. I'm just kind of curious, how do you guys feel like the characters you play have evolved during the time? Because you guys have been playing these characters for years. How do you feel like they've evolved? I don't think, my, I think my voice acting has evolved more than yeah. the character. I don't think well, Goku is, Goku is the least evolutionary character other than his transformations <laughs> because he's fundamentally the same yeah. throughout the end of his entire story arc, whereas Piccolo and Vegeta and other characters have a genuine, genuine you know, story arc that like arc, where they yeah. go through through more changes than Goku. Yeah, my understanding of the show has evolved over time yeah. as we as there are more wikis and yeah. wikis and things like that that help us honestly with our job. I can't tell you the number of times I've actually had to <laughs> refer to an online source to go, okay, exactly how many times did this happen? Um, but Vegeta, I think, as opposed to Goku, has had one of the best evolutions of any character over the series. It's kind of what yeah, so amazing Vegeta's about got him. Part story. of this question is also, do you guys feel like the way that you've chosen to play these characters has changed over the years? Um, I mean, I think we've we've kind of kept true. I mean, as our understanding of the characters change, so does some of the the choices we do for individual lines. I mean, Kai, we may have treated a little bit differently than than Z because neither of us really even knew a whole lot about what was going on with Z and Kai. We had a much better translation and, and a lot more understanding of the characters and about fifteen more years of experience working on Dragon Ball. But I don't know. I, I the only thing I did differently was. Uh, the, the original voice I had to do for Vegeta was certainly a lot higher because I was trying to copy Brian Drummond's voice. And then over the years, I kind of let that voice slip down, partially because I wanted to and I think it felt right for the character, and partially because I just couldn't do that super crazy high voice all the time. It was My voice was getting torn to shreds. So Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we talk about... I know, I'm sure as voice actors, you guys get the question all the time, how often do you get recognized? I want to take that a step further. I'm curious, what is like... what is the, you guys have any have had any any interactions with fans that were particularly amazing or terrible, like a best or worst experience? I mean, I get recognized a lot when I don't expect to. Like, I went to go buy a camera the other day at Best Buy, and I got recognized by two employees. Um, so that was kind of weird um, and uh, flattering, certainly. Um, I can't think of that really terrible interaction. I gotta say, like, I get we get recognized like periodically. It's yeah, not, it's yeah. not all the time, but yeah. usually your chances of being recognized increase exponentially if you're at GameStop or at a grocery store. Oh, I'm sure. For some reason, but I'd say one of my favorite fan interactions ever was when I was first dating um, my wife um, before we got you know long before we got married. When we were first dating, we were at a movie theater going to see some random movie together, and afterwards. I mean, she didn't know much about what I did, or maybe she knew a little bit, but had no idea kind of really what it was about. Um, we, I got stopped. He goes, are you Christopher Sabot? I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, can I get a picture with you? I'm like, oh, gosh, I'm sure. That'd be, that'd be awesome. And I felt like the coolest person in the world because somebody literally just asked for my photograph. A stranger asked for my photograph in the movie theater, so it gave me extra points with my wife at that moment. That's and awesome. He totally got laid that night. I did. <laughs> totally. I did. Now they have Your two wife, babies. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> we, we had sex twice. <laughs> uh, related question to that, is there anything that like that people ask you guys to do a lot when they see you, or they ask you a lot of over nine thousand hate? Like, what's the over worst 9, thing that people ask you? Just Come the over 9,000 thing. Come <laughs> me, huh? I'm sure you get that all the time. Yeah, uh, they, uh, yeah over 9,000 gets asked of me a lot. And, uh, you know, I can't. I can't deny its impact and deny how important it is to a lot of people because it was it's obviously it's a meme, but uh, yeah, it gets really it gets really tiresome. the uh, The other thing that gets a little bit frustrating is sometimes being asked to to do lines that aren't actually from Dragon Ball Z, like from the abridged series and stuff like that yeah. that we haven't even some of them we haven't even heard. So I'm sure. those are the only that's the only time it gets a little awkward. Uh, I do it just because I'm like I'm a big comic book guy. I have to ask. Uh, everybody always talks about Superman versus Goku. Do you guys think that Goku could beat Superman? No. Yes. Flat out, you say yes. Well, because of God mode. What is that? It's Goku. That's a good point. Yeah, but that's... I say no because I play Vegeta and I'm an asshole. Like, like... <laughs> I say yes because I'm like... Oh, no, I've analyzed it. Probably not... I don't know about... <clears throat> Superman's vulnerable to two things. Magic and kryptonite. Sorry, my throat. <clears throat> All right, take your time. Superman's vulnerable to two things: magic and uh, nudity. 
And, Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> and Goku... Goku's power is not based on magic or its chi or energy. So, Goku's also the type of person that would be like, <clears throat> hey, uh, I want to fight you at your strongest, so go get really close to the yellow sun and get really charged <laughs> up, and then I'll fight you. Uh -huh. But if Earth was in danger, he might do instant transmission to a planet with no yellow sun, and then take Superman there, and then That's, he could beat He could him. take Superman to a place with a red sun and immediately destroy him. Right. So yeah. there's that. That's and then before. in God mode, which the powers of which have not been delineated, what does that mean? You know, like is they, they all they do in the movies is like he has blue hair, and he's faster and stronger and more powerful. But there's no, they don't spell out what the extent yeah. of those powers are. I say, I would say that uh, Superman would win only because Vegeta would secretly help him in some way. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Awesome. Uh, two more questions. Number one. So you guys are here a lot to promote Resurrection F. If there's one thing you could say to people who haven't seen it yet to get them to go out and buy it, what would it be? Watch Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. Like wait for the DVD. And then just do a double feature in the afternoon. It's because they go together really well. Yeah, if you're li if you are listening to this interview, and it means anything to you at all, go see Resurrection F and Battle of Gods. Like, go get those, go get those films. I mean, you're the last person to have seen it because a lot <laughs> of people saw it in the theater. Um, it's amazing. It's the best dubs that we've done for Dragon Ball, and it's some of the best uh, material that we've ever worked on for the Dragon Ball Z series. And I'm not kidding. It looks beautiful. It's got a great story. It's if you're a fan of the series, it, there's a lot of fan service in it. There's also some great action and incredible surprises at the end of one of them. Like, I, I, I just couldn't recommend anything more highly. All right, awesome. And uh, last question, what are you guys fans of right now? What are you reading or watching or listening to that you wish more people were reading or watching or listening to? Well, I'm, I'm playing a lot of games. Like I'm, I think Shadow Warrior is the sleeper hit on PS4 right now. I think that game is so good. That's your plug? Uh, what's that? That's your plug? Uh, I wasn't saying that. Cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm not done. Um, and there's also The Witcher, which I really enjoy. And I also just finished up... Uh, what shows am I watching? I'm, I'm catching up on all the shows that are like off the air. Like I just finished The Newsroom. I think Bree's talking me into watching Suits for some reason. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then uh, and I'm watching... like I was binging I'm, and everything I can because I've already binged Homeland. Yeah. I've already binged everything I can. You know, and I'm waiting for a new Sherlock. So there's that. Yeah, the, um, we all. I, yeah. yeah, Sherlock is the most brilliant show ever. Uh, I have two kids, so my time is very limited. Uh, after I get home from working all day and I have to like deal with putting them to bed, I usually get only a, a handful of hours. So in those few hours, sometimes silence is best for me. But when I am watching stuff, I just finally finished uh, the end of Hannibal, which I think is the oh, most yeah. beautiful series that uh -huh. has ever been made. Uh, for television, just from a, an art direction standpoint, it's phenomenal. Even from a food styling standpoint, yeah, it's, it's incredible. incredible. Um, and I'm really pleased so far with uh, Fear of the Walking Dead. I'm a, I, I kind of like that series so far. Like I, I, I'm far more interested in the the timeline of the series where it is now than I ever was at kind of yeah. what's happened so far down the line in the regular Walking Dead. I want to so. binge Gotham, and I was binging Arrow, but I got honestly disgusted with that show because even though the cast is great and it's a great concept you still on the first season uh yeah first well, season I'm, of arrow is real hard to get well through. and then i got through the second season the problem oh, okay. i'm having with the show yeah and i talked to one of the cast members he told me the third season gets really good because he's on it um the problem <laughs> i have with the show is there's none of the characters have any redeeming qualities and then like the mother and the daughter are having these stupid conversations that have nothing to do with anything i'm like yeah what are these two idiots talking about and everyone's like there's nobody with any like everyone's so vapid I'm like, I, I really want to like this show and like these characters. And it's just like, okay, everyone's just shallow and selfish and horrible and has a horrible dark past. And I'm like, nobody's got any redeeming qualities, even though I think uh, the acting's fine and, the, yeah. and I want to like the show. So I stopped watching it because I started getting sick, but apparently it's supposed to get better. I'm in season two now, I think. It, yeah, uh, all of the, the problems I had with the characters were very much the same at that point, and they all get better. But thank God, because I was like, I just want to throw up after a yeah, while. No, yeah, I know the feeling. But anyway, let's All right, that show. awesome. That was fantastic. Thank, thank you. you guys very much. Hey, thank, thank you, you man. Sorry, Take care. So, thank you.